Hey guys, what's happening? This is Lake Mendocino, a reservoir, which normally would be much more filled with water up to there somewhere, up above these rocks. However, this is actually quite a bit fuller than it was a few months ago, towards the end of the summer. My stepdad, who uh, lives here with my mom in uh, Ukiah, nearby, was showing me pictures of the uh, lake in the fall, and it was even lower than this. So this is uh, definitely not ideal, but uh, it could be worse. This is the uh, water source for the area here. It is a beautiful, sunny January day. And I'm going to uh, walk over there to that uh, peninsula, which if the water was high enough would be an island. And uh, just go for a little wander, maybe uh, around the island or something like that. Go check it out. You can walk across the dam here, as you can see all the people up there. There's a uh, proper walking path there, and then you get to some trails down there, which I have recorded various videos walking along those trails in the past, but I'll do something a little different and get over to this uh, island here. So, three ways that the banks scam you while traveling. Now, the... Uh, critical thing to understand here is exchange rates, currency exchange rates. That is what all three of the uh, issues are going to be, and these are all things that come up regularly and can cost travelers a lot of money, depending on how much stuff you're buying or money you're exchanging. It can be tens or even potentially hundreds of dollars that you get just completely ripped off for no reason other than you didn't understand the deal that you were getting in the course of your exchanging currency, whether specifically exchanging currency or buying something in a foreign currency, which is then exchanged through the banks into your own currency, withdrawn from your checking account or charged to your credit card. So the uh, website that I'm going to mention here, no, you know, sponsorship or anything, but it is the uh, site that I use is xe.com, or you can get the app on your phone, and then you have access to it to check the latest exchange rates, even if you don't have a cell phone signal or Wi-Fi, so get the uh, XE app. And so the important thing is to understand exchange rates and what the latest exchange rates are, depending on your home currency and wherever you are dealing with a foreign currency. So basically the uh, question is who is going to change your money on all three of these issues? So the uh, most uh, basic and most understood concept is you travel to France and you have US dollars, you bring, you know, $500 US and you want to get, now they use euros, not the, uh, you know, French franc anymore. They use the euro currency throughout uh, Europe. And so you need euros in order to enjoy your vacation in France. Now, one way to do it would be to go to your bank, say here in Ukiah, your local bank, and take your $500 and then go there and go into the bank, ask if they have euros, and if they do, then exchange it for euros. Now, the important thing to understand here is that the number of whatever currency that you're going to get back is extremely variable. It is not a fixed thing. And I think that probably a lot of people don't understand this and they just think, well, go wherever and uh, exchange your money and then you'll get the latest exchange rate. And that is not at all the case. And that is the ultimate issue here. And so if you go to your local bank, in your home country, that is one of the worst things that you can do. You're going to get a bad exchange rate. To some extent, it is about supply and demand. How many people here in this small town in Northern California need euros? 
very, very few. They aren't gonna have a whole lot of euros probably at the bank. They're not gonna give you a good exchange rate. You're gonna lose a lot of money. You are much better off going to a bank in the country that you're going to be traveling to. So take your $500 US to France and go there and exchange it there in the country where you're traveling because of course there is much more of a demand for euros there also because France is a touristy country there is a fair amount of demand for US dollars also because the US dollar is a strong and widely desired currency then US dollars are good to have basically anywhere if you're going to be exchanging money then US dollars is one of those currencies that uh, is good to have as a emergency fund. I always travel with a few hundred bucks in US dollars on me just as a just-in-case situation. I lose my bank card and don't have any access to cash through an ATM, then I have some cash that I can use. So US dollars or euros or British pounds, those are the uh, currencies that you want to have on hand for exchanging in just about any country in the world. Now, banks also vary a lot in any particular city. I talked about this in a video in which I was in Germany. I think it was in Frankfurt or Stuttgart, I forget, in uh, Germany. And I had Swiss francs because I'd left Switzerland and hadn't gotten the chance to exchange them back into euros, which they use in Germany. And so I arrived in uh, Germany with a pretty big uh, sum of Swiss francs and discovered, as I kind of expected, that they aren't uh, very widely in demand there. And as a result, then the exchange rate wasn't good. So I went to a bank right near the train station in this uh, city in Germany, and it was a really bad exchange rate. I was going to lose like 30 bucks, but uh, I decided to hold off on uh, making that exchange and continued looking around at various uh, banks in the city. And finally, I found one that was offering a significantly better exchange rate than the other one. And so I did the uh, exchange, got my euros, and as a result of holding off and finding the other bank with a better rate, then I lost less money than I would have. It still wasn't a great exchange. I would have gotten a better deal if I had exchanged it back in Switzerland, where the demand for Swiss francs is, of course, higher. So uh, let's kind of get into the middle of the island here, or the peninsula as it is for now. So uh, exchange rates are not fixed, and the way to avoid getting taken advantage of by bad exchange rates is to understand the latest currency exchange rates. And so that is where the website xe.com or some other website that has the standard rates comes in to play here is to know what the rates are and check them before you do any sort of a currency uh, conversion so that you aren't losing a lot of money. Now, some people have protested that XE.com is not the best site or whatever, but uh, I have been using it for years and I have found that if I do a ATM withdrawal, for example, which I will talk about more in a second, then the uh, rate that my bank exchanges money, the uh, currency that I withdrew, for example, I am in the United Kingdom. I go to an ATM machine in the UK, in London, and I withdraw, say, 300 British pounds. Now, my bank account back here in the US, I have Wells Fargo, is of course not in British pounds, and so there has to be a currency conversion done there in order to determine how much US dollar is going to be withdrawn out of my account as a result of the withdrawal that I did in British pounds. And so if I make a withdrawal somewhere outside of the United States in another currency, and then I check 
the exchange rate that my bank had applied to that withdrawal, it will usually match up pretty closely, very closely, to whatever is listed on XE.com. Now, the kind of ironic thing here is that, uh, in this case, your bank is probably the good guy. Your bank is probably the best exchange rate that will be offered of all the other various ways to exchange your money. And so that uh, leads into really the best way to deal with money and getting the local currency when you are traveling is to make ATM withdrawals because it is much more reliable than taking your $500 US or if you're in the you know UK, your 500 British pounds and going to elsewhere in Europe, whatever, taking your currency somewhere and then exchanging it at a bank or more likely at a uh, currency exchange office of some sort, then those uh, rates are going to vary a lot and it is very easy to get ripped off, especially places like airports, train stations, bus stations, places where tourists congregate and the uh, desks there, the currency exchange desks, are going to take advantage of both the demand and the ignorance, for a lack of a better word, of many tourists about this particular topic. And uh, they will give a bad rate. They might, you know, advertise, you know, no fees, when no fees is definitely a good thing. But uh, really, that should just be standard, that uh, you don't get charged a additional fee because they make their money from the currency conversion, and uh, they can make a lot of money, a lot of extra money, and basically scam you with uh, bad currency conversion rates. And so check XE.com or whatever website that you prefer, something that has a updated current, relevant, accurate exchange rate so that you know that you're getting a decent deal. It doesn't have to be exactly there, but when you understand currency conversions better, then you can, you know, figure out, okay, how much money am I losing? I'm exchanging $300. Okay, I'm going to lose five bucks compared to what it lists on XE.com. You know, five bucks, that's not, you know, so bad. But if you're losing 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, then you're just losing money for no reason. And so you want to find a currency exchange office where you're getting a rate that is, you know, close to the standard rate for that day. But uh, what I do most of the time when I'm traveling is I don't, you know, take the US dollars in my wallet and go to a desk and exchange it. I just withdraw using my Wells Fargo debit card and uh, withdraw the local currency. And then my bank does the conversion and it is a fair rate. Now, this leads into a issue that I have discussed previously in other videos, and I will continue to discuss it, you know, ad infinitum, as long as it comes up in the course of my travels, which unfortunately is on a regular basis, and that is ATM machines that offer you a currency conversion, instead of your bank converting the money, then this machine will offer to convert it instead. Whoever is, you know, owning, managing that ATM is basically saying, there is some money exchanging hands here. How can I get a cut of it? Now, it is, of course, standard for ATM machines to charge a withdrawal fee if it is not your bank. Even here in the United States, if I go to a ATM that is not Wells Fargo, then they will probably charge me, you know, $3.50 or 5 bucks or something to withdraw money. Same thing in a foreign country. You are withdrawing euros in France, and the ATM machine there will very likely charge you a fee to withdraw money from that uh, ATM. Now, this uh, leads to another point, which is that there are a lot of ATMs around the world which do not actually charge you a fee to withdraw money. 
Now, my bank will charge me $5 for every foreign withdrawal. So uh, I withdraw from France and then my bank charges me five bucks. Now that is some incentive to withdraw larger amounts of money. Also the potential withdrawal fee at the uh, ATM itself. And so that will be in addition to the five bucks. So if they charge $5 withdrawal or, you know, three euros or, or uh, um, 20 Turkish lira or whatever, some sort of equivalent of, you know, three to $6 or so is standard then uh, that is in addition to the $5. And so you're looking at, you know, around 10 bucks or so every time withdrawing money. But there are actually lots of ATM machines around the world which do not charge you a fee at all to withdraw money from them. It is very random. It seems to depend on the country. Some countries seem to have a, a higher likelihood of not charging you the ATM fee there depending, I guess, just on regulations or whatever. And so it is something to consider trying is if you uh, go to an ATM and especially if it's going to charge you a large amount, you know, it's trying to charge you eight bucks or something like that to withdraw, then uh, you might just, you know, cancel that transaction, try another ATM, see if it is a lower fee or a zero fee. And then if it is, of course, keep track of, you know, the name of that uh, bank and look for that ATM again um, next time you need to withdraw. Also, many people have mentioned the Charles Schwab bank account. I guess this is an online banking system, bank account, in which they reimburse you for all foreign ATM withdrawal fees. They do not charge you a foreign ATM withdrawal fee like my Wells Fargo account does. And so you... Uh, don't pay any withdrawal fees. So that is definitely worth uh, looking into. The uh, only reason that I haven't done that is just it is another thing to deal with to stop using my Wells Fargo account and then set up this other bank account. And really when it comes down to it, then the amount that I'm paying per month for ATM withdrawal fees isn't very much. 20, 30 bucks, you know, something like that. Especially if you make a point of withdrawing greater amounts of money then the uh, fees go down when it is a flat fee. And so this leads into the very insidious scam that really just should not be happening, which is the ATM machine offering to convert the money for you. So basically they're saying, instead of your bank making the conversion, we'll make the conversion for you. So that's more convenient, right? They also tell you exactly how much they're going to be charging you. And so the ATM machine will offer a conversion for you and give you a specific amount in your home currency. So say you're in Istanbul, Turkey, and you want to withdraw Turkish Lira. And so you try to withdraw whatever amount. And then the ATM screen will pop up and say, conversion offer something, you know, it can be worded in various different ways, but uh, basically it will give you a exact amount. It will say, accept this conversion offer and then it will say, you know, $289 US. And so it is basically taking advantage of your familiarity with your home currency, as well as your trust that, well, it's a official ATM machine for some official local bank. They must be offering a decent exchange rate, right? No, actually, anytime that that happens, it is going to be a bad rate. It is always a really, really bad rate in which it can cost you 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars, depending on how much you are withdrawing, for absolutely no benefit. The only supposed benefit is that it is telling you exactly how much is going to be withdrawn from your account, which is more than you will pay if you decline the conversion. Basically, it is a thief telling you how much they are going to take out of your wallet. That is all there is to that offer. And so you want to decline the conversion and allow your bank to make that conversion of the currency. So that is why, in this case, your bank is the good guy. So basically, the lesson is anytime that an ATM machine offers to convert your currency for you, decline. And then you will very likely just pay a fee, the normal ATM withdrawal fee of three to six bucks or whatever, instead of the conversion, which if you do the math on it, check xe.com and see the difference, then you will realize, oh, these guys are trying to take 50 bucks out of my money for no reason at all. 
It is just a straight up scam that should not be happening. So this uh, leads to the third way that this can happen, that you can lose money on currency conversion, which is basically the same situation of somebody else trying to do the currency conversion instead of your bank. And that is with credit or debit card purchases. So you go to a restaurant and you have dinner and then at the end of the uh, meal, then you pay with a credit card and the uh, waiter brings you the machine, put your uh, credit card in it, and then it asks you a question. Do you want to pay in Icelandic kroner, if you're in Reykjavik, or US dollars? And once again, they are taking advantage of your familiarity with your own currency because the uh, credit card machine there will show an amount in US dollars, your own home currency, and an amount in Icelandic kroner, if that is uh, where you are in Iceland. And many tourists will not know the exact currency exchange rate and they will see kroner. You know, I don't know how much a kroner is, many people will say, but here it says how much exactly in US dollars. And that is where I'm from, the United States. And so they will pick the US dollar rate when it is the exact same situation as the ATM machines offering to convert the money for you instead of your bank. And so you always want to make the payment in the local currency. So that is the lesson in this case is if you are in Iceland, pay in Icelandic kroner when using a credit or debit card to pay for your items. You always want to pay in the local currency and then your bank will make the conversion and you will save yourself money as opposed to trusting this uh, middleman who is going to rip you off with no benefit in return to you.